Hey everybody, have you heard of the three sisters that plant gill with beans, squash, and corn? It's classic, it's a Native American indigenous planting guild. So why don't we hear about other guilds? I mean like, <laughs> Um, we, we don't hear very much about um, gills. We hear about companion planting. We hear about gills maybe in food forests. But what about um, something like the Three Sisters? Well, I'm here to tell you about something that I developed over the years that I love. And I call it the Five Cousins. So just like cousins, they have some competition. Um, they work together. Um, and overall, they have an amazing effect on the world. <laughs> So, so what they are, very simply, is it's a, a soil-building permaculture annual plant guild that is designed for spring and summer, um, and it's designed to chop and drop and create a clear a blank slate for, for the next season so that there's no weed seeds, there's no, like, like it's just blank, so you can plant whatever you want in it. And that's why the annuals are so important, because if it was a perennial, you'd be chopping it and it'd be re-sprouting. But with the annuals, you are chopping and dropping it. You're taking the seeds in many cases. You might be chopping it before it forms the seeds, but in most cases, you let the seeds form. And then you take the seeds and then chop and drop it, and there's nothing there. So it's really, really powerful. It's a great way to set up a garden. It's a great way to build tons of soil. And it's a great way to charge your, your soil with fertility. And I'll get into exactly why and how when we get into the members right here in a second. But for many of us, we know about winter cover crops. We know about, um, I'm walking back to it right now. Um, we know about um, green manures and, and tilling it in. And it's these soil tests that allow us to see what has worked and what hasn't, but it doesn't actually tell us what we could be doing because it's focused on bare soil. It's focused on testing things that we've done traditionally. And um, there's a lot of science involved in working with some of these other plants that has, hasn't hit or hasn't reached enough people. Um, there's uh, like a fertilizer radish, right? So there's uh, actually like radishes that they um, only um, have designed. Come on, camera. Come well, There you go. Um, these are radishes that are designed for for nitrogen, for phosphorus, um, and designed to be tilled into the into the soil, um, so they decompose in situ. And the reason that they're so good at this is the reason brassicas are so good at, you know, scrounging up nitrogen. They're so good at accumulating phosphorus. And then we have buckwheat. And buckwheat, you know, it's a great nutrient accumulator, no doubt. But its real superpower is it steals nitrogen from the cowpeas, from your nodulating legumes. And then they go into hyperdrive. They double down. They increase, like, like by double. And they start producing tons more nitrogen. And if you have things like buckwheat and, uh, and uh, daikon radish that are scrounging up the free nitrogen, there's no free nitrogen for that, the cowpeas to, to get lazy on. And so they end up going into hyperdrive even more because there's nothing there. So there's some competition. There's a little bit of stealing. The buckwheat's stealing from the cowpeas. <laughs> But overall, it's making, you know, the cowpeas work hard. The cowpeas are the greatest biomass. And nodulating legume, um, nitrogen-fixing legume to, to plant with, uh, with corn. That's been proven. Um, and it creates the most biomass, so it's great for organic matter. It's also low in phytic acid, so you can eat the greens. You can eat the beans without those nutrient-blocking um, uh, ability happening. So the five cousins also are amaranth. And amaranth is a C3 and C4 grass. That's how they handle their carbon, how they take it into their bodies um, and, and use it. And so it, it means they take in a lot of carbon. And when they take in that much carbon, the C4 grasses, remember the carbon's turned into sugars they trade in the soil. 
um, with the soil food web, the soil economy, you end up having like so much sugar in these things that you can make syrups, molasses, sugars, all these sorts of things. Um, and that's why sugar cane is a C4 grass, uh, corn is a C4 grass, um, sorghum is a C4 grass. And I love sorghum because of its behavior. Sorghum's, we can just bend down here. Sorghum's behavior is such that it um, produces, you know, three to five uh, seed heads on it. So it's tons of pollination opportunities. It forms tons of seed and it's also, it tillers up. So it sprouts from the bottom a ton. And so you end up having so much opportunity for so much growth um, that you have tons of biomass. It's really high in nitrogen. It's really uh, high in carbon. So you end up having a fast breakdown of material. So this is like we're composting in place. We're breaking it down. There's nitrogen involved to help that breakdown process. That's the catalyst in composting, you know, is the nitrogen. And we have brought in so many pollinators, so many birds. So we've got the, nutri the nutrients from the birds. We've got um, all the soil food webs cycling, working with all these things. And then we're going to chop and drop and feed the soil web at the end. And we're going to create tons of organic matter, improve the soil, and create a blank slate for starting next year. So the five cousins are amaranth, buckwheat, cowpeas, sorghum, and daikon radish. And together they compete, they work together, they trade, they partner. And they provide multiple stories, multiple canopy layers, increasing the humidity layers closest to the soil so that the soil life has this really humid, supportive, and dark, they love it dark, atmosphere to work in. And also when you cover it with that organic matter, you're giving it even more shelter so that that sensitive layer that you've built up over the spring and summer is protected over the winter so that you are ready there, they're ready there when spring comes. These are the five cousins, and this is what he used to spread the garden edges. This is what he used to set up a new area. This is what he used to build soil. And they're also, you know, all edible and all incredible. So that's what I really love about them. I love saving their seeds. I love eating them. I love growing with them. I love chopping and dropping them. Um, I love working with the five cousins. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. Oh yeah, and stay tuned because the Kickstarter starts on Monday for Permaculture Soil Science and Solutions, the course and new book. I'll be working with Dr. Lane Ingham, Professor David Montgomery, Dan Kittredge, and many other incredible soil experts from all over the world. When we're working together, we're going to be creating something absolutely incredible, something world-class, something entirely unique, something holistic, something permacultural, something that will lead to permanent cultural change. So I hope that you join us in that. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I'm so excited. So see you then.